Uh, joining us on the hotline, uh, Vicki Cornell. Good morning, Vicki. Good morning. Is the, the coughing okay? Uh, everything. I know you had a coughing fit. I mean, <laughs> isn't that isn't that terrible? And it was like literally two minutes before it started, and I was like, oh my god, in, in a raging coughing fit, like was not stopping. Um, so yeah, it's calmed down. Well, and you know, you know when when somebody coughs nowadays, it's like, oh my god, it's the COVID. Oh yeah. god, she's got her. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I said I can't be on the line being like. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with her? You know, like, COVID test time. But, um, yeah, so sorry about that. That's, that's all right. But it seems to have settled. It seems to have settled with a fisherman's friend. All right, well, listen, <laughs> a little throat coat, you know, uh, a Ludens, you're all good. Ready to, ready to, uh, to do this hard-hitting interview uh, with, uh, with the Riz Show here in St. Louis. Hmm. Hey, by the way, thank you for the gift in, in December, the gift of... A studio album from from your husband Chris Cornell, a collection of covers called "No One Sings Like You Anymore." It was a surprise for everybody. The record is supposed to come out in March, but surprise, here it is in December. What made you uh, decide to release it? Well, actually, it wasn't really. It, it came, it's coming out in March because I suddenly was sitting there around the holidays and it was around Thanksgiving, and I thought we should release this record and then the record label of course was like what are you talking about and management was like can't do that you can't make it before christmas it's you know um so the physical actually comes out so late because it kind of just hit me that like i wanted to have chris around us for the holidays mm -hmm. and i also thought it was you know a big it would be a gift for his fans you know um i'm really grateful to them for all the love and support you know, over these last three and a half years, like we, we could not have done it without them. Um, so I just felt like it was something special to give back. And, and some of it was just, you know, selfish intents and purposes just to feel him around, you know? Mm. Yeah, so, so the physical copies, you can pick up a physical CD or record in March, but, but the album mm -hmm. is streaming now uh, at all your, at all your yep. streaming sites. Um, would you consider Chris a music geek because the songs on 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 the record here? I mean, it's all over the place from Harry Nielsen to Guns N' Roses to yep. Electric Light Orchestra to uh, yeah, to Prince. Was, was was Chris a music geek? Total music geek, total music geek. And like he went through his, um, you know, his his iTunes, his you know, his list of songs. It goes, it's all over, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no. You know, genre, he would never stick to one specific genre. He was all over the place, all over different timelines. And and um, I think that, you know, and he was influenced by all these different artists from, you know, different genres and different times. So I think that's obviously evident in this, you know, record where, you know, he's basically showing himself as a fan of music, you know. Mm. Um, he's a fan of all of these um, artists and, and styles and and you can see the influence, you know, that they've all had on him in different ways. Yeah, a couple of the standouts uh, on the record for me. So Harry Nilsson's uh, Jump Into the Fire is is amazing. Uh, of course, we're playing Guns N' Roses' Patience. And when Guns N' Roses went mm -hmm. in town, uh, the Guns N' Roses played Black Hole Sun in concert. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? And that's so uh, amazing and uh, so grateful to Axel and, and the guys. Because it's it's really from the day Chris passed every concert every night I, they play it and you know that's a huge tribute to Chris and you know I always say that keeps speaking his name that keeps him alive you know we want to hear him spoken about every day you know it's um it's 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 a game changer you know and you just feel him around you and uh, it's just really important for for me for my children you know um, and. And that love out there is uh, is incredible, and so I'm so grateful to Guns N' Roses for yeah. for playing that every night. Yeah, it's funny to say you know keep Chris in your life. I think at least once a day, a Chris Cornell song comes on in my house or in my car, mm -hmm. whether it be solo stuff, whether it be Soundgarden stuff, whether it be audio audio slave stuff. I <laughs> at least listen to one Chris Cornell song a day. It's like an apple a day, you know, keeps Doctor Way. Chris Cornell song a day, <laughs> you know, keeps me sane. I, I love that. But I love that. That's I think nice. the standout for me is John Lennon's Watching the Wheels, which I'm going to play after we get off the phone. Yeah. I didn't know he was such a, be a big Beatles fan. Huge, huge Beatles fan, huge Lennon fan. I mean, 
he, um, you know, and he had done that amazing cover also of Imagine. That's not on the story. I think it's on the on the anthology that we put out. But um, yeah, this he was he was a huge fan, and and this was you know um, one of his his favorites, mostly you know because he could res- he resonated with the song, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so and some of these songs, I think that he just he chose them because he he just loved the artist or whatnot. But and some of them he could show off his like vocal acrobatics, you know. Um, and then some just you know hit home for him. And I think that watching the wheels. Um, was one of them, you know, um, being that it was about Lenin changing his whole life, you know, from engaging what was in self-destructive behavior to deciding that he was finally done with that and putting his family first. Mm. Um, And so while John put his career aside, you know, Chris put his, you know, destructive behavior aside, and we all got together um, like a caravan, like he just, you know, and and would travel the world together. Mm. And... um, and that was it, and it was like family and music, and and, and that was amazing. I'm so grateful for that time, you know. Uh, what, um, what kind of music? So. What kind of music was always blaring in the Cornell House? Like, what what kind of music was being played all the time? Oh, it was everything. I mean, it's like I I, I posted this I think months ago, but like you know where Chris is is playing and teaching you know our daughter how um, to sing uh, "Love the Way You Lie." Right? Like, you wouldn't think that he's, like, listening to, you know, Eminem and Rihanna. But he was. Like, <laughs> so it was all different types of, of, of music. Um, and, uh, and it's funny because I still see it with my daughter. Like, her, her, her collection of songs is the same. It's like, where did you get these from? And how do you even go so deep into this, you know, mix? So, so it could be anything at any given time. Yeah, you know. And and your daughter um, your daughter's a great singer. She put out on her one of her social media things, uh her singing uh, was it Hunger Strike from Temple of the Dog because what was it last last week was the 30th anniversary of that song being released? Yeah, isn't that incredible? Yeah. That it's 30 years. It like makes us all like realize like we're we're like, kind of old. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking geez, like you know, I don't know. I was in like Middle school, yeah, you know. I was, thir- I was thirteen years I, old when that came out. But when that came out, that was a that was a thing. That was a thing, man. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So she played. She she had had done that for um what was it called? Music Live. Mm. Um and to raise money for you know COVID. Um and then she thought, okay, I want to release again. Like I can't believe it. It's you know the anniversary and. And she had a very special bond with her daddy, um, and especially around music. And so it was, um, yeah, bittersweet, super special. Um, it sounded but, great. Yeah, they, yeah, she can sing. Apparently, she can, <laughs> she can sing. I was always thinking, you know, like we, and Chris and I would never push the kids into like, they didn't have to take piano lessons, guitar lessons. It was always like they could do whatever they want when they want. And Chris was a believer that, you know what, it's just, if you have it, you have it, right? And if you love it, you love it, and it comes, and it doesn't matter whether you started at, like, six years old and, you know, your parents put you in front of the piano. Um, And we were always worried because, you know, I'm tone deaf. Mm. And so I didn't want to glamorize something. Yeah. (laughs) A complete disaster, you know, because you never know. You, like, plant seeds in kids' heads. So it would be like, you know, bring them home, like, a little veterinarian kit, put that in front of them, not just, you know... The keyboard, um, but she but, gravitated but, towards yeah. the music stuff, huh? Yeah, I mean, she would do that with Chris. It's funny because we really were on the road together all the time, and um, so like at sound checks, she'd be on the stage with her dad, you know, performing and 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 messing around with songs, you know, while my son would be playing hide and go seek, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's two different things. So yeah, she she loves it, and it's just part of her and you just find her in the studio just sitting there writing or listening to songs or messing around with different you know and so i think that's just a natural you know where she's gravitated does she want to get in uh, the business gravitated for does she want to be in the in the music business i mean you know she kind of just right now like she doesn't really talk about it seriously she just you know just does it like i i don't even go there right really with her but would you would you encourage it? I mean, you know you know the ins and outs of the industry. I mean, would you encourage her to go? Yeah, oh, man, you I don't know, want my kids getting involved in this. 
Um, I think that it, it, it depends, you know, like, I, I mean, it's not really, I wouldn't think that, oh, it's something that's, you know, it's like a, a bad negative thing. I, for me, I think that whatever's going to make them happy mm. is what they need to do. Um, but if she did, I'd be right there next to her. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just in case. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I encourage them to, you know, just find what they love. Yeah. Um, just, you know. So a, a couple yeah. more, a couple more questions before before uh, I play this sure. uh, John Lennon you know cover that your husband <laughs> did. Uh, is there more music to come? Because I'm seeing this thing listed as volume one, which would mean there'd be a volume two or maybe volume three. Is there more Chris <laughs> Cornell music in the works? Yeah. So I mean, first of all, that's kind of funny, right? Like, so they put out this press release and they showed me and they're like, okay, so we're not going to say anything about volume two. And then the image had volume one on it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> is this supposed to be like a little trick? Like, you know, catch me if you can. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so there is a volume two. The thing with this volume one though, that makes it special, um, is that he mastered it. He sequenced it. This is, this is all Chris, right? From beginning to end. And, um, the other one was mastered, not sequenced volume two, but you know, um, and then because he was just such a prolific writer, you know, he, um, we're blessed because he has left us lots of music, you know, um, not in completely finished form, but he has, you know, there's enough to work with and the Cornell stamp is all over it. Um, so that's really special. So there, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot of music. What's your favorite song on this, uh, on this, on this record here? Oh, it changes. <laughs> um, you know, I think it, it's like, it, I have a few favorites. Like I love Sad Sad City. Um, when he first played that at South by Southwest, I remember being like, "Wow, what is this? Like, when did you write this?" Because I had never heard heard of it before. And then I went and listened to the original, and it's great too. Yeah, I, I've um, never heard of the original. You know, it's originally it. done by Ghostland Observatory, which I've never I've never yeah. even heard of them. But. Yeah, and that's like like Chris had like these. You know, it was like obscure choices and like you know what you would never think of. Um, when he would do covers, right? Like, I remember the first time that he said to me, I think I'm going to do a cover. You know, like, I have to find something. And it was like, he came back to me with Billie Jean. And I was like, oh, Billie yeah. Jean? It's in, like, Michael Jackson? Yeah. You know? So um, he, he definitely loved to, to mess around with this. And um, But, yeah, Sad, Sad City, Ghost Land Observatory. I never heard of them either. But the original song is, is amazing, too. Um, and, you know, it was just, Chris does this thing where he just, you know, um, internalizes, I think, and then puts it out as, as his own. So, um, that said that he's one of my favorites. And then, uh, I love watching the wheels. I think just cause it resonates, you know, it's like the story of us the sort of thing. Um, and then my other one is stay with me, baby, because wow, like his vocals on that, mm. Like the first time I heard him singing it, um, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, "Oh, now I see why they say he's like one of the greatest voices in me." Like, I was just so blown away, um, you know. And I remember going up to his room when he was doing it, and uh, and I just looked at him like, "You're just such a show off," <laughs> you know. Uh, and he was like, you know, this smile that, you know, like he knew, he knew what he was doing. Um, and he was super proud of that because, you know, it was a challenge. He was up for the challenge. Um, but those, those are my, my top three right now. Um, and of course, nothing compared to impatience always, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen him do, uh, nothing compares to you in concert, which is, which was which was amazing to see. He played uh, one of the last times he played it was the Sheldon Hall. Yeah, Sheldon. Yeah, uh -huh. fantastic. It was, yeah, it was it was uh, intimate. It was not many people there. It was him and was it a cellist? Yeah, I think so. I think that place held yeah. almost under five hundred people. I think, yeah, it was like so. an arts. It was an art center. It was it was an, it was an yeah, amazing concert. Very good. Uh, well, Vic, I re I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to chat with us. I'm going to play uh, your husband's version of John Lennon's "Watching the Wheels." The record is called "No One Sings Like You Anymore." It's streaming now, but the physical physical record comes out in March. And uh, good luck with everything, and, and we're looking forward to new music. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Take care. All right, Thank there you. she is, Vicki Cornell, and here is Chris Cornell with Watching the Wheels.